Ugh, it's been a while since I've worn this. Hi, I'm Harper. You might notice that I'm wearing an apron today, and Ava, who normally does all the cooking, is not. And that's because today she has challenged me. I've basically been in hardcore Italian food school for several years now. So today, Ava wants to see if I've actually learned anything and can cook some Italian food for myself. I have no idea what Ava has selected for me to cook today. So I'm pretty confident that uh, at least three basic Italian dish you are able to do. Okay, what are the what are the ground rules for the challenge today? Harper, today you can't read any recipes for these three dishes. Not even our own recipes no, on pastagrammar.com. Forget that. The second rule is that you can't measure any of the ingredients. So you need to do everything by eye. And the third rule is that you can't call Vincenzo for help. <laughs> Can I tell you one thing? My wife is calabrese like Eva. Oh, I'm so sorry. I used to be... I, I, <laughs> Leave Vincenzo in Australia free from you today. All right, so what's the menu for today? What do I have to cook? Number one, fettuccine all'alfredo. Oh, okay. Now, not fettuccine Alfredo. No. Fettuccine all'alfredo. Si, si, si. Fettuccine all'alfredo. I'm off to a good start. I know the difference. The second one is pollo alla cacciatora. Oh, okay. One of my favorites. And obviously, we miss a dessert. Mm -hmm. And which dessert do you want to cook? If not the most classical Italian dessert, which is tiramisu. Oh, thank goodness. I thought you were going to say cassata or something. I can change. Nope, nope. Tramisu. Tramisu sounds good. Okay, I think I'm ready. Let's get cooking. Okay, so I think I'm going to start with the tiramisu because the longer it sits in that fridge, the better it will be. Definitely, I need lady fingers, savoyardi. I'm going to need eggs. I know I can't measure ingredients, but I can count eggs, right? I think so, Arthur. <laughs> Not that that helps me very much because I have no, I don't remember how many eggs to use. I feel like, I feel like I've seen you use three. This will be a three egg tiramisu, a three egger. This is how they do it in Milan. Eggs. Mascarpone. Do we have mascarpone? You wouldn't give me something that we don't have the ingredients for, right? Everything you need is in that okay. fridge. Oh, yes. Mascarpone. Do I need milk? No, but I need coffee. I need coffee. Which actually reminds me, I need to start with the coffee because that needs to get cool. Now, I need quite a bit of coffee. And so you'd think, oh, I'll just go and use this beautiful giant Bialetti that we have. But no, because of course, on the day Ava asks me to make tiramisu, this breaks, this is broken. That is for the emergency. And, and this is stupid. Don't, don't, don't buy these. They're cute. They don't work. Okay. I still don't even know if I'm missing ingredients. Probably sugar. We have sugar, right? I'm really terrible at making mocha pot coffee. When Ava does it, it comes out great. And I try to copy exactly what she does, but when I do it, it sputters and burns and tastes awful. And you're gonna go right here. I need to do something with eggs. Do you think these are big enough? I don't know. Are you worried? I'm trying to think if this is big enough. It's a three egger, it'll be fine. Oh, and I need, this doesn't count as help, Ava. Where are the, the things? <laughs> Under the kitchen aid. Time to beat some egg whites or egg yolks. Egg whites, egg yolks. I think, I think you do the egg whites, then the egg yolks with the sugar. Oh, off to an excellent start. Egg yolks over here. Oh, coffee's happening. Shoot, 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 shoot. That, 
I'm so bad at making this. I'm so bad. Why won't it come out? Why won't it come out? It always works perfectly for you. Well, I have some coffee. Okay, back to the eggs. Now, the fun part. That seems right to me. Maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna call that done. And this, I'm going to put in the fridge. Oh, coffee's happening. This one intentionally spurts the coffee and it's supposed to make it like espresso. It's not, oh, we got coffee here too. Out of bed. Okay, I'm gonna put this in the fridge for now. Is that enough coffee? <laughs> now I know that you water down the coffee, so I feel like that's gonna be enough. All right, I guess I'll make more. I need to beat the egg yolks with sugar, but if I can't, Measure the sugar. It doesn't seem like enough, does it? I'll do three for now. I suppose I can always add more later. Now, the one thing I know is that I need to beat these until the egg yolks are more or less white and there is no more crunch from the sugar. It tastes good. It does taste good. Still a little crunchy though. The mascarpone goes in at some point. I've always seen you just put a whole one of these in, eight ounces, but I don't know if you were making a three egger. I'll put in half. I feel like it needs to be thicker. I don't know if it's right, but it tastes really good. Now, time to put my egg whites in. I remember you folding them in rather gently. I think I do just a little bit at a time. Something like this. Seems right. I think it's looking good. I have to say, it doesn't look like very much. And I'm a little worried now that a three egger is going to make a small tiramisu. I don't think my little tiramisu is going to fit here, which is what I would love to do. Come to think of it, I think the dish I want to use is this one. This is a little trick, a little trick from Napoli. You season, you pre-season the dish that you wanna make the tiramisu in with coffee. You let it really soak into the glass. I do know that you water down the coffee. I don't know how much. I guess I can taste it. It tastes like slightly watered down coffee. I'm trying to remember if you first put in a layer of cream and then lady fingers, or if you start with lady fingers at the bottom. If it was a lasagna, you'd put sauce at the bottom. So I'm gonna do that. What was that? What was that? What was that quick pan up to my face? Am I doing something wrong? I'm gonna start with lady fingers. I've changed my mind. Look at that. I chose my dish extremely well. I'm gonna quickly dip them in. Not too long. I don't wanna soak them completely. Just want a quick little, quick little dip. Look at that. Look at that. Perfect fit. Time for the cream. I actually am starting to think that this is going to be an awesome tiramisu. A very small tiramisu. 
But as they say in Napoli, big things come in small packages. Next layer of lady fingers. As the dish flares up slightly and gets bigger, my perfect fit is being lost a little bit. That's okay. We can remedy that. What are you doing? You mean what am I doing? Why are you putting uh, so yardy like that? Just let me worry about why I'm doing it like that. Instead of filling in one long thing and having a whole side be uneven, I'll fill in little holes here. You know that it works. Yeah, you see? Maybe I don't know if it is good, but for <laughs> sure... <laughs> it's, 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 yeah. You used your own judgment to, to understand how to make <laughs> that. Nice, even, look at that. Come on, maybe too much cream. And now I really only <laughs> have room for one more layer of cream. So this is what in Milan they would call a three egg or double decker. Into the fridge she goes. Okay, time to make some savory food. I'm gonna start with the chicken. The pasta needs to be eaten right away. The chicken I can kind of leave and reheat a little bit. Now, I'm trying to remember everything that goes into polo alla cacciatora. Uh, gonna need some tomatoes. Um, olives. There's more than that. It's meat, so I need a sofrito, onion, carrot and celery, rosemary, I definitely need that. Uh, capers, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Feel like I'm missing something. Wine, white wine, right? White wine, it's chicken, white wine. I feel like that's it. Am I missing something? Maybe a pen? Well, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Ava, for that tip. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Tomatoes, I don't know. Something like, I'll put some more. I like tomatoes, something like that. Swing. I'm gonna put my olive oil in the pan now. Oh, what? Someone's been watching some Gordon Ramsay videos. Yeah, that's right. I almost know the correct way to cut an onion. Yeah, that seems about right. Carrots. I guess at the end, polo alla cacciatora is kind of like a chicken ragu. So I just need to think, ragu. What would ragu do? Ragu would add some celery. You're very serious. I never joke about my work, Mr. Bond. I'm ready to start. That looks like a lot of sofrito, now that I look at it. But we're gonna give it a shot. It'll be, uh, you know, extra oniony. Polo alla cacciatora. Uh, I can cut the tomatoes while that's going, because then all they release all their juices, all their goodness, all their flavor. And that's what I think I want. Sounds right. I still feel like I'm forgetting something. Okay, so my onions are a little bit translucent. So I'm gonna move them and add in my chicken. Hope that that's what I'm supposed to do. I guess I should salt. Salt goes very well with chicken. A lot, a lot of people don't know that. I think I'm gonna flip them. I think wine next. Don't don't you do that with the camera. I don't know how much. So I'm just doing some. Use a little salt. And uh, 
Wait until it doesn't smell boozy anymore. Most of the wine has burned off. It's thickening back up. Tomatoes I'm gonna put in. Olives. I like, I like olives. It's one of my favorite parts of the dish, so I'm gonna put olives, yeah? Capers. I feel like I need some more liquid. What would ragu do? What would ragu do? You see? You should ask yourself that all the time. Tomato paste. I can't believe I was forgetting that. Yeah, don't burn, don't burn. Some tomato paste and some water. And rosemary. Oh yeah, now the smells are getting right. Now it's starting to smell like polo alla cacciatore. Now I really like rosemary. I'm gonna really <laughs> add rosemary. I can tell, Arthur. No, seriously, it's like my favorite flavor out of any flavor there is, is rosemary. So since this is my polo alla cacciatore today, I'm gonna add as much rosemary as I want. Add a little more salt and some pepper. I think you partially cover it like that and we let it cook. And I'll probably flip the chicken at some point. So, fettuccine al Alfredo, unsurprisingly, requires fettuccine, which means is egg fresh pasta. So I need all purpose flour and I need some eggs. While I've made lots of fresh pasta, I've never done it like Ava does completely by eye. I always weigh the flour, but I can't do that today. I can always add more, so a little more. I really don't get why you gave me this dish because this seems really easy, but. Okay, I can tell already I need more flour because it's sticky. Did you think you were gonna stump me with this dish? Not at this stage. Not at this stage. Do you forget about the chicken? Oh, thank you. You're not supposed to give me hints today. I'm gonna flip the chicken, let it cook on the other side. Also gonna add a little bit more water. It smells very rosemary. <laughs> That's starting to feel pretty good. Now I gotta let it rest. That'll work. The way that the real fettuccine al Alfredo sauce is made is with some butter and Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. This is the real deal. Par, well it's par, it's par cheese. It could be Parmesan, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know how much butter. A tablespoon per serving, that seems right. Little pats of burro. Okay, and I'm basically ready to rock and roll. I still don't understand why you thought this would be challenging. Oh, are you planning to play baseball? Now, the thing about fettuccine al Alfredo is that the fettuccine needs to be super thin. Which is why it's one of the few pastas that you don't use this with. Aspetta. Are you changing your mind? Yes. I'm onto your tricks now. I see what you're trying to do. This is one of the few pastas where you need to use the pasta machine. You don't need, actually, you can do also by hand, so, but it will take forever. I should put water on to boil. This is how confident I am that I'm just gonna fly through making this pasta. I'm getting the water on now. I will put my finished masterpiece fettuccine on this. Maybe half. Keep this wrapped up. I have not used this in a very long time. Here we go. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh no. 
The way you're supposed to use a pasta machine is go to the widest setting first. So don't do what I just did and go at the narrowest setting first. Did you break my pasta machine? Yes. By making the mistake I made at the beginning, I've literally broken the pasta machine. Um, so we are now going to really put to the test how well one can make very, very thin fettuccine uh, by hand. And later I will go on Amazon and buy a new pasta machine for Ava. I'm so happy that now you will pay the price of using this. Now, normally I would just roll all of the pasta at once because it's not a huge amount, but considering the fact that I need to make it super duper thin, I feel like it'll be better to do it a little bit at a time. I was giving you an easy challenge with this pasta and you make it harder. <laughs> I've made fettuccine alfredo as difficult as it can possibly be. Now this is about where I would normally finish normal pasta. I can see through the cutting board. It's quite thin, but no, I've never been past this point. We're going into uncharted territory here. There is always a first time, Arthur. Yeah. Remember when I was real confident that I would need that pasta water super quickly? Hubris. This is like paper thin. I can't really ask you if you think it's ready, can I? I'm gonna call it done. I did it. Like this? The Arper is getting... <laughs> you did, yes, uh, the first half. Oh, right, I have to do the other one. Let me cut this though first. Plenty of flour. Allora. Okay, fettuccine is pretty thin. Is that too thin? Haha. Not bad, if I may say so myself. Put this here, and I'll make the second batch. Pasta is done. I've got my sauce stuff ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is heat this back up. I'm feeling good. Oh my gosh, the tiramisu, the chocolate. Okay, tiramisu, ready to eat. Chicken. Reheated, salt it, salt it. Here we go. This should cook real fast. It's super thin. I remember you cooking this for like 30 seconds. Okay, I'm gonna take it out and it's gonna go right onto with plenty of pasta water. Do my cheese. And now we toss it all together. Oh, it smells so good. It smells so good. Okay, let's eat. Has my hair looked this frazzled all day? A bad bit, you were busy. I was busy breaking your pasta machine, but we have a plate of pasta in front of us anyway, because I know how to use a mozzarella. But now we need to understand if actually <laughs> this is good or not. Yeah, it smells good, does it not? It smells amazing. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Well, what do you think? I think, Alfred, that even if you break my pasta machine, you did a pretty amazing job. It's a very good plate of pasta. If I'm being honest with myself, I feel like the pasta could be a little bit thinner and I feel like I could use more cheese. My only thing is that maybe I would put, uh, yes, a little bit more cheese mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit more pasta water. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, when I was mixing it, the cheese eventually it worked out, but it was a little clumpy at first. And yeah, probably some more pasta water would have helped. If I want to find what we say in Italy, il pelo nel uovo. What does that mean? The hair in the egg. <laughs> what? But you made all by eyes. It's the first time. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you. Now you ready for the second course? <laughs> I can't wait to eat this polla la cacciatora. So now that the challenge is over, the first thing I'm desperate to know is, did I forget something? You forget one ingredient, that is the garlic. You normally don't put garlic when you do a sofrito. Yes, but this is polla la cacciatora, mm. this is not a ragu. Mm. What would ragu do? It smells really good. I will I, say that about my own. It smells amazing. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Mm-hmm. So, pasta was seven on ten. <laughs> because me, a little bit of more pasta water, but this is ten on ten. This polla alla cacciatora is an amazing polla alla cacciatora. Wow. But you know what this goes to show? Is that it's the simplest food that's the hardest to do. I really thought that this would be much more challenging because there's much more ingredients and there's more going on, but the pasta was actually harder to nail. It's like even just a couple spoonfuls of pasta water make a big difference, whereas this, there's much more wiggle room and, you know. Fewer ingredients, more complicated. The yeah. more ingredients, less complicated. Yeah. Let's be honest. When you cook the pasta, when you cook the chicken or the meat or the roux, you really don't need the recipe. While when you make the ser. <laughs> so I want to see how you made the tiramisu. This was by far the hardest one to cook without a recipe, which I was not expecting from the beginning. It's hard to like visualize how big of a dish it's gonna fit when you're just looking at eggs. Very difficult to know like how much sugar to add. I really was second guessing that. Uh, yeah, so probably made some mistakes along the way here, but we ha I have a very small little tiramisu ready to eat. It looks uh, good because it's like, look at this tiramisu. It looks amazing. The custard is no running. Running? Is that a danger? I didn't know that was a danger. Mamma mia, most of the time when people, they make the, the tiramisu, they don't get the right consistency of the custard. All right. Oh, oh, oh. The consistency is perfect. You see? That's not I'm too impressed. shabby. It's solid. Now we need to understand if... How <laughs> <laughs> no, it tastes. Yeah, it tastes if it's sweet enough. Buon appetito. I can say to myself that with you, I made a miracle. <laughs> you put in front of me a meal that is uh, it was uh, cooked by an Italian who knows how to cook. And this well, tiramisu is one of the best tiramisu that I had in my life. No, I'm... come on. Mamma mia, Harper. Come on. Mamma mia, Harper. 11 out of 10. Just follow my recipe of guessing <laughs> and randomly. We will put the recipes for all three of these dishes in the description down below, but try them, try them without actually looking at the recipe. What I would recommend is seeing what ingredients you need and getting the, the gist of it, but then try just cooking it by feel. If you do that, let us know and tag us with a picture on Instagram. Let us know how it came out. Before we go, a quick shout out to a pasta grammarian in action. I feel like we're kindred spirits here. This is a young hashtag first time baker who made Nutellotti cookies, Nutella cookies, super good. All right guys, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Ciao. So Arthur, what's your plan for dinner? Because you're going to cook for me the dinner. 